and you are taking a live look over at the Israel-Gaza border, one of the many shots that we have across the Middle East as we get to the latest on the war. The Israeli military saying that it has eliminated about 100 terrorists over a 24-hour period and almost all of them during its operation at Gaza Shifa Hospital. In a 24-hour operational update, the Israel Defense Forces says at the hospital eliminated 90 terrorists, questioned about 300 suspects, transferred 160 for questioning and located weapons inside. Now, the IDF adding that it prevented harm to patients, staff and equipment at Shifa Hospital. In northern Gaza, the IDF says that its aircraft struck an operational Hamas tunnel shaft in response to a launch toward Sturat in Israel. And another nine terrorists were eliminated by troops via aircraft in other parts of the Gaza Strip. Now, an Israeli government briefing just wrapped up a short time ago. I do want to play that for you here raw and unfiltered as we do on Live Now from Fox. Good afternoon. I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman. Today is the 20th of March 2024, day 166 of the October 7th war. 166 days. Our war aims remain the same. Number, four, number one, to destroy Hamas concurrently, to bring home the hostages and, of course, to ensure that Gaza never becomes a threat to us ever again and providing humanitarian aid to achieve these goals. This will deliver a stinging blow to the Iran terror access. I want to start today with an update on our casualties from this war. IDF fatalities since the start of the October 7th massacre have unfortunately risen to 593. That is up one since our last briefing on Monday. The people of Israel grieve with the family of Warrant Officer Sebastian Eon, age 51, from Russia Ayan. Sebastian, as he was called on his ID, but was known as Sabi. Sabi was killed yesterday fighting Hamas. Sabi volunteered for reserve duty. Sabi wrote on Facebook in January, we have no other home, we have no other possibility of losing, we must win. Sabi was a father. Sabi had recently beaten cancer. Sabi emigrated from Argentina. Sabi gave his life for the people and the state of Israel. There are no words, words of consolation. We embrace the parents of their dear families, to those who have lost precious heroes, sons and daughters in this war for our existence. The price of war is heavy. It's painful. Each casualty is a world unto itself. May their memories be a blessing forever. Now an update on our efforts to free Gaza from Hamas. The War Cabinet's instructions to the army was to do everything to limit civilian casualties. The ratio of combatants to civilian deaths is now down to less than an unprecedented one to one. Each civilian death is, of course, a tragedy. The Security assessment is that 18.5 out of Hamas's 24 battalions have been destroyed. 1.5 battalions remain in central Gaza, with four remaining in Rafah. We do not see a way to eliminate Hamas militarily without destroying these remaining battalions. Following a request by President Biden, the Prime Minister has dispatched Minister for Strategic Affairs Ron Dermer head of the National Security Council, Tzachi Negbi, and senior representative from the IDF to the US. The Prime Minister has emphasized his determination to act resolutely, to permanently eliminate the remnants of Hamas while providing humanitarian solutions for the civilian population. Now an update on our precise operation against Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists at the Shifa hospital. Over the past day, We've eliminated terrorists, located weapons, including weapons stored near the office of the Shifa hospital director, no less. All the while, we've prevented harm to civilians, to patients, to medical teams and to medical equipment. We've eliminated 90 terrorists, more than 300 terror suspects detained and questioned at the hospital. That's 300, a phenomenal figure of terror suspects detained and questioned at the hospital itself. 
160 suspects have been transferred to Israel. Just yesterday, terrorists fired a launch from northern Gaza at Sterot here in Israel. It fell short in Gaza. The IAF aircraft struck the Hamas terror shaft from where the launch emanated. In central Gaza, the IDF identified a terrorist who was eliminated by sniper fire in Jabalia. The IDF uh, aircraft struck and killed six terrorists in Khan Yunis. IDF eliminated two terrorists and another who was loading weapons. Next, I want to deal with reports of food insecurity in Gaza head on. The Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, known as the IPC, made its doomsday predictions just yesterday. COGAT, which coordinates and facilitates humanitarian aid entering Gaza, says the report quotes Hamas figures uncritically, uncritically. This is the same of Hamas, of course, that claims that Jews are the descendants of pigs and monkeys. So a report outdated even before its publication is parroted internationally and the UN take their word for it. To repeat, Kogat confirms it's a bad assessment based on out of date and an out of date picture. Just yesterday, 248 trucks carrying humanitarian aid were inspected by Israel and transferred to Gaza. Only 126 humanitarian aid trucks were distributed by the UN. There is stable food supply in southern Gaza. Markets are bustling. Food stocks are piled up in the aid agency warehouses. In northern Gaza, where 10 to 15 percent of Gazans remain, better distribution is necessary. But our proactive measures are providing relief. Let's be clear, Hamas's objective is to create an image of, an, of a humanitarian crisis. Where there is hunger in Gaza, it is hunger orchestrated by Hamas. These are the images they create. These are the images they want you to see. I can guarantee three things. Number one, no one in Hamas is hungry. Number two, Hamas and other criminal and terrorist gangs steal the aid. And number three, Hamas wants to maximize the suffering of ordinary Gazans. Why? To stop the war, to protect their own skins, not ordinary Gazans. So today and every day, there is no limit to the amount of aid that can be delivered into Gaza by land, by air, and now even by sea. That brings us to the end of today's briefing. I will now take your questions in the chat. Please state uh, your news outlet. Thank you very much. The first question is by Joe Pollack from Breitbart News. The IDF said that it uh, eliminated senior Hamas operatives in Rafah on Monday, yet there is a public debate between the US and Israel about whether and how Israel should operate in Rafah at all. Was this mission cleared with the US and is it sending a message that Israel intends to operate in Rafah regardless? Uh, Joel, thank you very much for your uh, question. Uh, what, of course, it does um, um, uh, stress and what it does prove to be true is that Hamas is the last strong... Uh, that uh, that uh, Rafah is the last stronghold of Hamas. It was from Rafah that we released, we rescued two of our precious hostages. We believe many of the hostages are in Rafah. We know that four battalions are in Rafah. Uh, we will always try and work with our best friends, our good friends, the Americans, to make sure that we are on the same page. And more often than not, we are on the same page. But the Prime Minister has been very, very clear. There is no safe refuge for Hamas anywhere in Gaza. We will go after them wherever they are. Now, the Prime Minister has made a very important point of sending two, uh, three of his closest advisers to Washington, D.C. to meet with the Biden administration, which, is, which, of course, is the right thing to do. Any other questions regarding practical considerations about this operation should be, of course, addressed to the IDF. And that was the Israeli government briefing with David Menser. He is one of the spokespersons there for Israel. Now, we know that today is day 166 of the war. And at last check, a ceasefire and hostage release deal does remain on the table, but has not been approved just yet.